Have you thought of what it means to be good and to live in goodness? I often do. Obviously, being good also means a lifestyle of goodness. But what is a lifestyle of goodness? The Vedas, the timeless, self-evident knowledge of ancient India answers that to understand goodness, we must recognize that there are three different ways to live. The first is in ignorance, where nothing has a purpose. And the second, in passion, where everything is about selfish enjoyment. And the third one is in goodness, where life is about self-realization, and that's where we want to go. Now, when we systematically develop goodness, then the tendencies of ignorance and passion are subdued and we get to enter a life of goodness. And as one becomes more strongly situated in goodness, the search for the spiritual characterized by Bhakti Yoga becomes prominent and inclinations towards faithlessness are quickly vanquished. Okay, but how to be situated in goodness? Answer, cultivate those things already in goodness. What are those things? Here are some. Organize your time. For example, rise early for morning meditations and go to sleep early for a clear head. Make sure you are in control of your time and not a slave to it. The next is habits, and this is a big one. Abandon foods of violence, meat and fish. Adopt a plant-based diet. Give up destructive cravings like alcohol, drugs, and cigarettes. Reconsider the role of sports and exercises as activities to keep only good health and not to enhance bodily beauty. Now the next topic is water. Keep high standards of cleanliness and bathe at least twice a day and not with hot water. If possible, live near large bodies of water which obviously nurtures a bountiful atmosphere. And another important thing is the company that you keep. You know the saying, Birds of a feather flock together. If you want to be good, keep company with those desiring the same. Select your friends carefully. And while selecting your work environment may not be possible, associate at the workplace only as much as the job demands. Don't get drawn into a destructive workplace social scene. Also, make sure you raise your children by the same values that you live. Otherwise, they may be an in-house challenge to your life. If possible, live outside cities, avoiding the passion of consumerism. And as far as work, work for what you need to live and not all the trapping society expects of you. Are you getting the picture of what cultivating things and goodness is about? Here are some more. Select and follow those spiritual texts that are authentic and are about self-realization and shun the sectarian and the new in the latest yoga craze. Meditate on things of substance like approved names of the Supreme and avoid speculative meditations. And when it comes to mantras, chant those that praise the Supreme and reject those that offer wealth and fame. And finally, live your life dutifully, which may not always be the most desirable thing, but it's the right thing, the good thing. Of the various things I mentioned and others, the rule of thumb is reject those in ignorance, be indifferent to those in passion, and embrace those in goodness. By increasing goodness, the understanding and practice of bhakti yoga becomes natural and transcendental knowledge is awakened. And when knowledge of your spirit soul is revived and the illusory identification with the body and mind are driven away, then that by the further development of transcendental goodness, you will attain life's goal. This is living in goodness.